Most businesses waste time on N8N tutorials that look cool, but don't actually deliver any real results. I'm going to show you five things that you should do immediately after learning N8N. Save you thousands of dollars on hiring costs without the need to watch another 10-hour tutorial on N8N. For those of you who don't know, I'm Jack Roberts. I built and sold my last tech company with over 60,000 customers, and now I run a seven-figure AI automation business. So if you haven't already, grab that coffee, and let's dive straight in. Now, the very first thing to do is something that holds back literally 99% of builders on NA10, and I've seen this with my own students, and when you apply it, you'll really, really accelerate your progress. And that's just first of all acknowledging that NA10 is incredible, right? But have you noticed that on YouTube, for example, the second that you finish a course or tutorial, there's a new tool. There is a brand new update, and you feel like you're behind, like you don't have enough hours in the day to actually learn everything. And you never end up building anything or the things that actually move the needle in your business, which is kind of like having unlimited ingredients if you're a chef and making no food because it doesn't actually deliver you any results. Now, there are two types of NA10 users that you'll see. There is the forever builder who is always watching stuff, but never actually ships anything. And then you have the action taker. Bam, that's you, okay? <laughs> Who builds, they learn, they build, and then they take actual action. So how do you actually solve this? And one of the quickest ways to actually do this, I found with my clients, is that you actually look at the biggest profit center in your business. One of my clients had an incredibly, like really profit part of their business. We made one simple change and ended up making like $12,000 extra per month. And from that, we got like 30 to 40% of that. And the way that we did that is we looked at the biggest profit center. And then we just ask ourselves to very simple questions. How can we do more of the thing that we're already doing? And then how can we actually make that thing better? And then what happens then is it's the business that's driving the automation system rather than the automations that's trying to drive the business forward. And if you're selling this to businesses, it would be focusing in on lead generation stuff because you will hit a diminishing returns principle with your technical knowledge in NA10 where more technical stuff won't actually advance you against your core goals. And my personal rule is I will never actually watch a piece of content or video unless I take an action at the end of it. But learning this stuff about NA10 is going to put you ahead of 99% of businesses. But you're never going to reach your full potential unless you learn how to leverage these three technologies, which is what you should do immediately after learning NA10. And of course, the AI landscape is changing. And NA10, like I say, will put you in the 1% of the 1%. And this is when I was down there in New York at the world's first AI agentic competition. Very, very cool. I absolutely love this platform. But it is one amazing part of AI systems. Now, what the hell is an AI system? Well, an AI system, as I define it, has four real parts to it. When you think about it, we have some automation, which is NATM. We have AI, which you can leverage. We have some form of data. And then we have a beautiful front end that we can interact with and do whatever we want. Now, there are two things that you need to learn that if you understand the systems behind them, you will be able to build anything you need to in this new AI feature that we've got. And you may already know a lot about some, but you have to log these down. So what are they? Well, the first one is going to be coding platforms. These are things like Claude Code or Gemini 3. To be honest with you, these are incredibly disruptive technologies. And as you actually advance in your automation, systems journey, you'll realize that there are some instances where it's just obviously the best place to learn. And when you combine that with an incredible knowledge of any time, you'll kick butt. So what am I talking about when I'm on about this sort of stuff? Well, I'm about building apps like this, like I did on a previous video. This entire application, guys, was built with Gemini. And all you do with Gemini is basically you have conversations with it, you talk to it, and if it doesn't give what you want, you talk to it some more. And we cover a lot on this channel about how you really maximize your output with it. Now, what's fascinating about this is this is connected to different APIs. For example, this is connected to the YouTube API, which is pulling all these beautiful videos down. You can do this in any time. I showed you in the last video that I did, and I'll put a link on screen somewhere, how you can really scrape things from NA10. But actually, these systems, guys, are at the point now where you can actually say, I, I describe what you want to do, feed it the credit credentials and it will build it in. And there are some instances like this, if you want to build this dashboard that, like we just spoke about, combines front end, combines the AI, combines the UI, combines all this beautiful stuff together, will work. It's not that any isn't incredible. It's like my literal favorite, favorite tool. It's just you've got the right tools to use at the right time. So you want to be learning, if I had to simplify it down for you, things like how do you build with Gemini? How do you develop the apps? Well, what we do is we build here, we get a really cool prototype, something that we really like. 
like this, for example, or you just create what you want to, you've got loads of videos on the channel, then you download that and you end up editing in something really cool like Cursor, or you end, you end up editing in something like Anti-Gravity and you bring it onto your laptop and you start to understand, learn the power of developing these technologies on your laptop. Then you understand things like, how do I then post this online, which we host in things like GitHub, which basically, for your reference, stores all of the documents. So when you're building these softwares, it is all code. That's all it is, is just code. That's it. And then all we do when we download these things, guys, is we save the code to our laptop or we just save all the code to GitHub. And GitHub is just a place where we store everything, right? And then when we have these apps and they're not just websites, they're dashboards, they have automations in it. Like this one that I built here, for example, will scrape different competitors and do many beautiful different things. So this is the future. We are getting to the point where you can build these incredible apps and technologies and you have to learn that to stay competitive. So that's one of the first things I'd prioritize. The next thing that we need to prioritize is something called the data. You may have heard the word data before, four letters, very powerful. But what we're talking about data is super base. So for example, when I'm on about super base here, super base, the way I want you to think about it is i always say this microsoft excel on steroids what is it really superbase realistically is a place to store data and configure that data and it's like these great beautiful databases and tables so for example our text-to-speech startup glider which is this beautiful character over here we're launching it literally tomorrow so these are all our test users but all of this information guys is connected to superbase so all we did is i built all these beautiful things engagement growth conversions revenue all this great data and you connect it to a superbase no matter what it is that you're working on, you're going to need to have some kind of database where you have your users and um, things that you want to save, like any kind of application or automation is going to involve some kind of data management. So you want to focus in on learning the skill of using an SQL editor, of using something like a super base for your technology. And using these technologies is one thing, but if you don't follow this next principle, you're only ever going to reach a fraction of your potential in this new AI economy. And that's very simply this, which is to stop thinking in terms of automations and start thinking in terms of systems specifically one skill that is going to be incredibly important for you to learn, and that is the AI orchestration skill. Let me give you a great example. Somebody in my community, for example, was really great at building specific automations for their business, but what ended up happening was they'd build it, but then it would become defunct and not relevant anymore. What they didn't do was build systems. Now, how do you actually physically solve this? One of the exercises that we did to solve this is we actually got a big spreadsheet out and we ide ideated the full process from start to finish. What is the end outcome we want? What are all the inputs? And then from that, you reverse engineer a system so you can orchestrate all of these different technologies, the databases, how it links in, what it should actually do into a system because automations, they get old. Systems don't. Systems sit there that enable you, in his case, to buy back much more of his time and then go into hire other roles and grow his business in beautiful ways. So this is the idea, the skill of AI orchestration. And practically speaking, one of the best ways for you to do this little hacks I found is when you have a new project that you want to do is spend more time with the problem. So I will I will literally, before I build anything now, I will go to Claude or my favorite language model of choice. I, I flirt around a little bit and I'll usually say, hey, help me understand the problem I'm trying to solve first. And I'll actually spar with it and I'll say, look, here's what I'm thinking. This is the problem I want to solve. Help me get really clear on the actual problem. And then when you understand the problem, we can then from that, decide, well, if this is the true problem, what is the system that we need to do that? And then you start to think about, great, well, then the tools become really clear about what we actually need to orchestrate to the results. You'll get way better results for your clients and you will grow your business if you start thinking in more of an orchestrative way. And then once you understand that, there's one other huge trend that you have to look into. And this is one of the biggest ones that I'm seeing sweeping everywhere and will become more prominent in the future is the idea of owning your own infrastructure. Not only will this immediately cut your costs down, but that's going to be a critical skill for when you're deploying with clients and you want to host things within your own business. And the key thing is, if you look at something like NA10, you can save probably 50, 55% on the cost. It's not really a cost-driven thing, but whether you're doing it in NA10 or you're doing it in different applications, the ability and knowledge of what that area looks like is going to be really critical for the future. So to an NA10's example, one of the things that I personally use is Hostinger. It's pretty cheap. It takes like two minutes to do. You basically come onto this web page here. You pick a server location. You click on next. Now, if you were serving this for a client or if you, for example, need to be GDP are compliant or whatever, you can pick the server. This basically is where is the computer that's hosting your, your instance. 
essentially. You can pick that. You basically then select thing. One thing I would highly recommend you do if you haven't done this yet is pick the one with 100 workflows. So you've got some stuff that you can plug and play with. You may as well check, choose it. And then you can come down here. You create a root password for them, which can be anything you want, providing it hits the right criteria. You go down. You don't need these things. You click next. You select the plan. I would highly recommend this plan in all the instances that I personally used. I've never needed more than KVM2. If you go with these, you can click, click select. Then once you've done that, you go through to purchase it. It's like $6.49 a month. I think it's about 55% cheaper than going on NA10. But once you've built that, guys, and got it, you'll basically come down to a page that looks like this. You enter your information, and I'll send you a link to your email. You activate that link. And then you're ready to rock and roll and you come back into something that looks like this. And then from this dashboard, you can literally click on things like this. You can click on manage and then manage app. And then that takes you into the NA10 instance and you're ready to rock and roll. Now, NA10 is just one example of this, but you will have all the other apps. This idea that you, for example, if you look at the triangle and I say the triangle is this, you have the code hosted on GitHub. You have your editor, which is Claude Code. And then you have a website like, for example, Vercel. And then whenever you make these changes to GitHub, it will automatically update for you on that website. So the idea is you earn all the code, you've got full access to it, and you're not dependent on anybody else's infrastructure. And the fifth thing that I would do immediately after learning NA10 is to ferociously guard my time. You have the greatest gift and also the greatest curse now because you found this incredible technology. You can see all the potential. And the same thing that makes you an incredible entrepreneur is also going to be the same thing that can hold you back. And that can be the curse of the shiny object. You always want to go and do something new. So I like to focus, and it's one of the reasons why we built our community this way in the 20 80 principle of like what really is the 20 percent of the no faff that is just going to get me way beyond that and then if you want more stuff we've got that's comprehensive but you want to apply that lens to your time because i always say this that the boat that you're in is more important than how hard you're rowing where you allocate your time and the areas that you want to apply yourself to for your business is way more important there's no shortage of new in the ai space what's really important is that you're actually applying your time in the right places which is why for example i will never stop learning any tech because i freaking i know about this stuff I, I like nothing more than getting an internet and workflow, going deep and figuring things out. You just have to be responsible with your time and how that's being applied to different things so you can focus on the right thing. And I know this isn't a 100% technical video, but if I am truly committed to helping you grow your business with these systems, I have to talk about these things because that is genuinely the stuff that holds most people back. And if you apply it, you'll absolutely fly. And look, now we've actually covered these five things to do straight after learning NA10. The next thing to look at is how you can combine NA10 now with these incredible AI systems, which you can learn by watching this video right here.